the new channel. The views, opinions, and insights expressed in the following show are those of the hosts, producers, guests, and viewers. They do not necessarily reflect the position of the channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the new channel. Here to help you see the new you. This is Jesse Francis Rebostillo, your host of the show HR Hotline. Welcome back. This is HR Hotline Season Ender. And we are so proud to have a guest coming from the employers. Then the inauguration, the inaugural second season next week, we have no more, no less than the Secretary of Labor. But let's go first to the insights before we start our conversations. The title or the topic for this episode is the expectations of the employers from HR. So this is a wonderful and interesting topic. Wonderful that we are in a live stream. For those who are here now, what you can do is share it later on so that all our other HR friends may gain from this. So what is actually the expectation of our bosses, of employers to HR? Simple, our role. I was just involved in a survey. Actually, they gave me the survey raw. So I did the analysis and I did the recommendation. And one of those that I was able to, what do you call this, uh, come up that the recommendation for the, for the result of that survey, it's actually a, a survey from the HR Nation sponsored by Salarium, was that what is actually the role of HR now that we're having this pandemic? Would you believe that the first choice was a partner, not the HR business partner. That's different. I, I teach that in my webinars. That's different. That's actually a, a senior or a executive position wherein you, you partner with the different executives and you actually uh, is the conduit between HR and the operation. But this one is, it's different. This is your role. So all of us, we should be a partner, partner to our colleagues, partner to the bosses, to the principals. So they expect us to be at par. So it's again, I always say this, woe to you if you are an HR who is not confident to be a partner. Yung sunod-sunuran ka lang. No, kasi a partner, you must be on the same level playing field. You're a partner. You hold hands. And this is where what we use in uh, 
the Philippine Society for Talent Development, which I always get from the past president, Femery Kabantak, handhold. You handhold each other. So that is the expectations. If you're a little bit depressed or going down or some worry or anxiety, your boss must be able to unhold you. Handhold. Or if your boss is trying to have some anxieties also, try to push him. What is next? A consultant. Again, that means that you have to be ascendant. Your boss, the principal, the president, the CEO, the CEO, or your colleagues and the people, your subordinates, must be able to look up to you, must be able to go up to you. You are the person wherein you are the base, wherein you bounce, you have to bounce forward because you are the consultant. They can consult you. Well, again, to you, they consult you and they don't know. Are we going to be required to have the tests? I don't know. I have to ask, how come you are the consultant? The next one is the facilitator. You have to facilitate. You have to facilitate the transition. You have to facilitate the transformation. It's a function of HR that you have to be in the talent development in the learning and development so you have to facilitate upskilling reskilling facilitate ease facilitate the connectivity then the next one is an implementer of course you have now to implement the programs but but you go back to your hr audit try to review what are you going to uh, actually tear up tear down tear tear tear, tear in your in your uh, guidelines and the handbook as quickly as you can, and then implement it. Implement our alternative working arrangement. Implement the protocols. And lastly, uh, this again came from the HR Nation uh, survey. And also it came from PMAPs, the most recent PMAP um, digital summit. And also from ACOPS, Employers Confederation of the Philippines, webinars. HR is expected to take the lead. So partner, consultant, facilitator, implement, implementer, and lead. Which is why I just finished a webinar in PMAP, that's a People Management Association of the Philippines, and I think there will be a similar one in ECOP. I am talking with uh, Ray Tadeo, that not only for HR, but for everybody. And I call the program the new HR manager or the new new normal manager. It's actually a workshop to change our paradigms and mindset because the expectation is we take the lead and it is a challenging call it is a demanding call so ladies and gentlemen we are honored to have a special guest who is a dear friend of mine actually he is a distant relative that's why we call each other the Gridas came from the Moyas. And, and then I just checked it last night. And what is the, the what do you call that? In, the, in our ancestry, in our, what do you call that? Uh, the tree. <laughs> in the, <laughs> it's actually the, the, the matriarch is actually four. So she's my great grandmother. So my great-grandmother is a Moya. So I call him Kaz. And you know, sometimes, uh, for the longest time, you know each other. But this time, he has a business. And we're going to ask that. And then I even haven't paid him yet. I order so po and hipon from him. But you know, this relative of mine, this friend of mine, is actually an owner of a school in San Jacinto, Mas Bates, actually still now the treasurer 
of that school and is actually a trustee of Liceo de San Jacinto. Now, he is an engineering, industrial engineering graduate and a, an LLB graduate. And he got a lot of studies abroad, I know. I know because I, I stalk him in his, uh, but no, he's a friend of mine in FB. And he, I recently, he just finished a course in Europe. I will ask him about that. Then also, he is a member of the regional tripartite wages and productivity board. Lumabas yung pakabikulano ko, productivity, productivity. Kasi bikulano rin siya. <laughs> Nakita na rin yung sarili ko. <laughs> the Tripartite Productivity Board. Ang hirap kaya dyan. So, he's the person to go. To ask him, what about the wages now? And then, he is also uh, in the National Tripartite Industrial Peace Council. And it's a technical executive committee. Yon, yung nagkakama up ng mga policies in partnership with Dole. Now, he is the Director General of the Employers Confederation of the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my primo, my best friend, and my, my sir, Sir Jose Roland Moya. Okay, I'm waiting for him, uh, Lloyd or Apple. I'm waiting for Roland. Okay, okay. By the way, uh, thank you very much, Owi, for 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 being here. And Pearly Mancoy. Hello, hello, Primo Roland, Sir Roland. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Jesse, my dear cousin, for the very kind and uh, uh, generous uh, introduction. I find your introduction quite uh, lengthy. At <laughs> oh wow, wow nice nice background what are those what are those images there at the back well these are actually some of the souvenirs which i bring back home every time i travel from especially from abroad i make it the yeah. point to bring uh, a piece or two of uh, you know uh, of uh, things that uh, distinguish a particular place every time i i go abroad Two things before we go to a break and then we have our conversation so that it will not be cut. One thing, what I mentioned, I just, I, I, it, 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 uh, it made a lapse of my memory. What was the latest uh, uh, study that you had, uh, that you had abroad? I think it was in Europe. Yeah, you, yeah. You, I, you took I, a course. I attended uh, the only certification course abroad uh, in the management of employers and business membership uh, organizations. It's actually a five-day uh, course, but uh, even prior to the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, uh, learning sessions, the, the there were online, uh, you know, sessions that were uh, conducted that lasted for almost... It was uh, blended already. So you are, you are used to blended, blended distance and remote learning. Yeah, that's very true because that's how the uh, International Training Center of the ILO conducts most of it, its courses. And uh, as you know, the International Training Center of ILO is based in uh, Turin, uh, Turin, Italy. I, I learned that uh, you were the top student in that box. No, all of us were top students. <laughs> but, uh, most of the participants are actually the uh, director generals, directors general, or the uh, executive directors of uh, around uh, 40 employers' organizations uh, all over the world. There were representatives from uh, Asia. Uh, one was from Myanmar, the other one from Vietnam, from South America, uh, Africa, and uh, Eastern Europe. Okay. So just, just, uh, just, just, a, just a question, uh, uh, Primo, Roland. Uh, how, do we, how do we fare with the other, other uh, employers' associations of the world, if you well, compare our, our, our association here? Uh, well, at least in Asia, I think we 
fare very well. We are a very we are considered one of the more uh, dynamic and uh, uh, proactive uh, business and employer organization in in Asia. Because in addition to our uh, our role in policy formulation, we are also active in delivering uh, services of uh, various kinds to our constituents and the uh, business uh, community. Uh, one thing about employers' organizations is that it should not only be active uh, in terms of uh, playing its role in policy formulation, but it should be able to match its policy formulation role with uh, services right. to its constituents right. in the business right. community in the form of, you know, research, uh, studies, uh, uh, training programs, so that these policies can be operationalized at the enterprise. Who, who is the, 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 the leader, chairman, the president of, of ECOP now? The president and, of uh, ECOP right now is uh, Mr. Sergio Ortiz uh, wow, yes. Luis, uh, Jr. As you know, Mr. Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr. is also the president of the uh, Philippine Exporters uh, Confederation. Yes. He also used to be president of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and uh, industry. So in effect, we can uh, look at him as a pillar in uh, uh, among business organizations in the country. Let's go personal. So you have a school in Maspate. Uh, well, it's a school that was founded in 1949 by my wow. uncles and, uh, and, uh, and aunties. It is based in uh, San Jacinto, Masbate, in Tikau Island. Tikau wow. Island, as you know, is one of the three big islands of uh, Masbate province. Masbate. It's the only uh, school in Tikau Island which offers uh, preschool, elementary or grade school, high school, college, and voc tech uh, uh, courses. Wow. And then it's, it's, it's right, it's a free, what, where is the free there? It's a free school or? Pre, pre preparatory, preparatory. Preparatory, okay. So, okay, so, so we'll have, we'll have the prepared, I, I prepared some questions for you, but this time let's have the first break. Uh, uh, let's have the first break or some announcements from this show. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Yes, welcome back to HR Hotline, and I'm very glad that uh, Christy is watching from Naga. Then we have Pearly, 
uh, a dear friend from PMAP is also watching, and Owe is 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 watching. I am waiting for PP Obet <laughs> is our suke here. Anyway, so let us start our question. We have a wonderful guest, the Director General of the Employers Confederations of the Philippines. But before we have him, let me read you some announcements. Always tune in with the TNC, the new channel, because we have wonderful shows. We have the big picture from Mondays to Fridays with Lloyd Luna. But then, of course, I am your lunch date. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. We have the business, uh, I business uh, from Tuesdays to Thursdays. And we have, ah, uh, this is nice, Boy Kilapio from Monday and Saturdays, the fourth project. You turn. This is a show with Carmine. And then we have the home buyer, Vaitanta Salamat. Wonderful, funny uh, show uh, every Tuesdays and Fridays with the puppet stories of Wan Lu. And then we have the marketplace at Thursdays and Fridays at 10 o'clock in the evening. And the talk on Monday, this is wonderful. Uh, uh, it's a, a TED talk sort of a show with, with uh, Dennis Kalamba. Then this was just inaugurated this week, the after shift from Monday. Wednesdays and Fridays. And of course, tonight we have a town hall special. So ladies and gentlemen, always tune in with the TNC, the new channel. So let's have my our the Director General of uh, Employers Confederations of the Philippines. Roland, can we have you now? Okay. While waiting for him, our topic is the expectations of uh, the employers to the, to the HR. And it's an important topic because actually the expectation, the answer for the expectations are to the various roles that you handle. So we are now ready with the, with the interview. And while waiting for him, you know, this is what is uh, uh, nice with um it's it's nice to announce the the job fair that we have here the job fair portion in this show it this is actually from our uh sponsor wills design and associate they are still hiring project managers civil engineers form work managers geodetic engineers surveyors just imagine that a lot are out of jobs, but they're still hiring. But you know, the problem here is that a lot of people are looking for jobs, but it's still difficult. I get it from ASEC Nikitutai. It's still difficult for people, for HR to look for uh, the right applicant because of their competency, in particular attitude, and in particular the skill, the skill that you must know now how to use the to, to be tech savvy. So we need, they still need HR supervisor, talent acquisition supervisor, it's recruitment, training supervisor, occupational nurse. Of course, it is difficult now to look for one, CAD operators. Then the next one is the warehouse manager. And this is how you're going to, to apply. It's either you proceed to their place in um, Quezon City, or you email to the recruitment at w d a i uh, wills the sena and associate inc dot com dot ph so w d a inc dot com dot ph and look for Ryan and Eileen. So for HR, if you're an HR officer and then you think you was you need some you need some. Uh, a new industry to work with, then why not join the construction? I came from an, a construction industry. So uh, in that, in that, in that instance, I would like to ask you, uh, Puzzle Box also, a sponsor of this uh, show, uh, they're looking for uh, careers at Puzzle Box Incorporated. Uh, they're looking for HR officer, social community moderators, graphic artists, copywriters and 
media buyers. So how are you going to apply? Log on to careers at puzzlebacks-inc.com and look for Albert Uzon, the general manager. So that's it. It's, it's nice that we have this uh, episode. So I know there were some connectivity problems that we were uh, waiting for you. Cousin Roland, can you hear me now? Yes, can yes. You- Yes, I know that it's raining. It's raining here in Paranaque. I am not sure if it's raining in Tai Tai. No, it's not. It's not. But I can hear Alistair earlier. No, it's, I was downstairs. Trying... it's downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let us start. I have I have a question. Actually, that's the topic. What are the employer's expectations from HR now that we are in this challenging time? Tell us. Well, um, I like it, uh, Jesse, that you mentioned the result of a survey which uh, was yes. conducted, which defined the uh, role of HR as one who is, uh, uh, what was the first one? A, a consultant? A partner, a consultant, facilitator, partner, implementer, partner, and lead. A consultant, a partner, a facilitator. Uh, implementer and lead. And a, and a leader. Um, yes. Well, uh, HR is at the forefront of the the, the employer's response to uh, COVID uh, crisis and all these roles that you mentioned uh, for the HR had to come into play in the discharge of the task responsibilities and functions of, the, uh, of an HR. We know very well that the pandemic forced almost every businesses to immediately uh, formulate, adopt, or improve remote remote uh, work policies, procedures, and uh, programs. The role of HR is to help employees to be safe and informed and uh, make sure that uh, employees and uh, the organizational leadership are guided through the unfolding uh, developments and uh, necessary changes. We know for a fact also that uh, remote work is something that is here to stay with us. Uh, for the longest time, and it will be a, a permanent uh, uh, feature uh, for most uh, organizations. HR must therefore collaborate with finance, IT, and other departments within the company in the development and uh, implementation of new rules. And uh, there are issues and uh, problems that need to be addressed, for example, how will management uh, translate uh, prevailing work, prevailing or existing rules and policies, um, making schedule and uh, formulating communications strategies to the new reality? The organizational leadership are guided through the end. Who shoulders the cost of remote workers' uh, uh, connectivity and uh, any required uh, equipment like uh, uh, printers, um, monitors, uh, laptops, uh, desktops, head- headsets, and uh, how much job descriptions uh, change? How will productivity and uh, attendance be monitored? What HR functions must adjust and uh, adopt in terms of talent acquisition, and development, uh, discipline, uh, benefits, and uh, compensation. Um, I think it's also important to emphasize that nurturing culture gets more challenging, challenge, challenging, more problematic in dispersed workplaces. Well-defined organizational culture is important and uh, critical to the long-term success of a company it, because it sets uh, organizational the organizational identity. It defines its corporate uh, vision and uh, um, and uh, makes sure that employees and uh, all levels in the organizational setup has this sense of identity and uh, purpose. Uh, uh, in their work, but c- 
culture is very vulnerable in terms in times of a crisis, especially because financial survival takes takes the priority over everything else. Unfortunately, corporate culture is not susceptible to uh, automation. There is no technology solution that can um, that can nurture, that can promote uh, organizational uh, culture. Employee engagement, constant communication, and the uh, demonstrated commitment uh, yes. to your culture by leadership are the only tools that will work. Uh, true, it is difficult to put culture at the top of HR priority list while you are, you know, fighting uh, fires of different forms and sizes uh, every day, especially in this uh, pandemic. But be that as it may, culture is even more critical, more important now, and can hold the organization's long-term viability and uh, sustainability. I think the other uh, important role of uh, the HR is to how to engage a remote uh, uh, workplace. We have to keep our employees engaged, improved, and uh, productive. And this is one of the roles of one of the most important and valuable yeah. roles. That, you know, uh, you know, well, you know what I gathered from you. It's it's the first time that uh, we really have to place on top of the all the various uh, activities, functions that the HR is doing, is uh, look into what is the emerging culture, a resultant of this pandemic. So yeah. aside from aside from the connectivity, aside from making sure that there is the health protocols, aside from uh, making sure that the working at home arrangements are in place, they really have to look into what is the culture. So right, uh, it's a, it's a it's a learning and development intervention. Where where were you? Is it storming, norming when you talk about culture? Shall it will culture be coming from the from the leaders, or will culture will really, will be coming from the from what is it what is happening? So right, I, I it is very it's it's the 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 what that I gathered from what you just said, uh, Sir Roland, is that while doing uh, the to dos, they have to also to look at. You mentioned about uh, the vision and the mission that should not be actually taken off the. Uh, the, the 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 mindset or the uh, in in doing all the HR activities, they should not go far from the vision and mission of the company. And then that the reason why I mentioned that is that there can be some changes in the vision and the mission. That's what I gathered from you. There can, of course, because we are we are transitioning into something of a better normal of a new normal so hr must make sure that the vision if there is some changes that will happen or the mission just imagine if the uh, if the organization is changing its product or it's changing its procedure they have to look into that mission and what is very important culture they are still have to but take care and look into what is the emerging culture of this. Because, Siguro, uh, Sir Roland, if they will not look into that, baka negative culture ang mangyari. Yeah. Kaya napakahalaga, Jesse, nung role ng uh, communication at saka constant and regular engagement with the workers because we, we cannot have a situation where there is a disconnect between the you know between the workers and the the, yes. the management the unity among this uh, various uh, you know the workers and management 
uh, especially in this time of uh, pandemic, is uh, uh, very important to ensure that the company continues to to operate and delivers its uh, uh, services and uh, products to to its customers. So you so yes. So that means that we should not really take it out of our of what we're doing the cultural building because it's happening now as i was i'm gathering from from our guests it's actually happening now we are working remotely we are uh, upskilling reskilling and then the, the, if the communication is not uh, we're not connected and we are not engaged you mean that you know it the culture is also already molding it's already forming and you may not know it. it it will not be it's out of bounds we are beyond the culture that is already being created wow yeah so ang ganda po ng ating pinag-uusapan ngayon for everybody who are who are going to or are listening now if you're an hr person or if you're an owner do not uh, forget that while we are transitioning we have to look into what is the culture that is happening even in this household i can notice it that there is already a, a a new culture that is emerging that is emerging that we don't uh anymore talk with our neighbors because we are so scared that we we are so following protocols there is now a new uh emerging mindset paradigms and culture thank you uh uh Sir Roland for that. Can we go to the next question? So you, ECOP, as the Employers' Confederation of the Philippines, you also take care of the HR practice and the HR profession. So what are the current ECOP's initiatives that have impact with the HR practice? I know that ECOP represents the HR in various, various, uh, um, what do you call this, uh, meetings uh what do you call that a technical working committee meetings with uh dole or i know echo also represent us they really represent us in uh senate and then the house of representative so what are the initiatives of echo now that has been um as you know uh jesse echo has a multi-pronged um mandate and this mandate ultimately benefits uh, HR uh, practitioner. You already mentioned that ECOP pre represents uh, employers in all levels of policy and uh, decision-making uh, processes. We put forward the position of employers on pending um, bills in both houses of Congress and the uh, Senate and House of uh, representative. We promote uh, industrial peace and harmonious labor management uh, relation. ECOP also fosters a culture of uh, compliance to labor laws and uh, regulation, regulations, and we also cap capacitate uh, employers, top-level officials, middle managers, and even rank-and-file uh, employees um, and provide them with the right uh, tools and skills to cope with emerging trends and uh, development. All this of the end goal of creator creating a le level field for a business and uh, preserving, if not creating uh, more jobs, and uh, to operationalize this mandate, ECOP uh, implements programs and rolls out these programs to to both our members and non-members in the business uh, community for example our uh, training and development department uh, provides uh, capacity building uh, activities in the form of seminars workshops and uh, masaya ako dahil uh, isa ka sa aming uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, persons uh, Jesse and I know for a fact that many of your training programs are among the Thank best you. sellers of uh, uh, in our of our training uh, offerings and uh, recently we just unveiled the e campus of uh, yes yes of, congratulations uh, uh, echo um, our advocacy group and the legislative affairs uh, department uh, provide support 
to the representational role of ECOP in policy making. Um, kailangan kasi yung ating mga positions should be uh, research based. Yes, we should yes, be able yes. to back up our arguments with uh, data and uh, and uh, statistics and findings from uh, researches. Our corporate social responsibility department and uh, advocacy group uh, implement uh, technical partnerships that foster compliance to to labor laws and regulations and encourage uh, uh, good practices. These are but uh, a few of the programs and activities of ECOP that uh, involve to a great extent, uh, you know, um, HR and its practitioners. I see. Uh, let's go to some um, intriguing, uh, intriguing mga question. We know that ECOP, you send representatives and you send your position papers to some uh, policy concerns that affects the, the, the labor, labor affects industrial relations, uh, yung IR, IR uh, areas of concerns. Can we discuss if you, if you will allow us so what is now ECOP's position on the security of tenure? Well, uh, Jesse, let us, let us be clear about it. Uh, ECOP uh, respects uh, security of tenure of our right. work because this is a constitutional uh, guarantee. It's uh, in our constitution, the basic law of the land. But yes. at the same time, businesses must also be given flexibility in managing its operations by allowing them to engage in legitimate uh, contracting arrangements. I, I like that. I well, like your word, flexibility. Hello, I like that. Word, uh, as you know, uh, yeah, as you know, Jesse, this, uh, uh, this contracting arrangements has been the subject of uh, so many uh, debates in the yes, halls yes. of our, our Congress. But uh, in all these debates, ECOP uh, emphasized that contracted employees are regular employees of the contractor. And yes. number two, the Supreme Court of the country has decided time and again that all work is directly related to the business of the contractee or the principal. Regardless yeah. of whether such work is directly related or not, core or non-core, the Supreme Court has already determined that all kinds of contracted, contracted out work uh, um, is directly related to that of the contractee. Again, I'd like to reiterate that employers must be given flexibility in planning and managing its workforce. That's why we have this uh, uh, principle of... Uh, um, um, in, you know, manage, so this management um, prerogative. Security of tenure does not mean perpetual uh, employment. Termination, oh, yeah. Yeah, but termination of employment is allowed by the labor code. Mm -mm. So stringent bills on security of tenure when passed into law could result in in job losses in this yes. fast moving competitive world have you know has arisen new methods and innovations used by employers in keeping abreast with developments in the world of work such as as well as other external factors that continues continuously challenge the operations of uh, businesses so methodologies such as cloud coordination, telecommuting or uh, remote work, compressed work week, and other flexible working arrangements are being resorted to by employers to, number one, address the worsening traffic situations, especially yeah. in Metro Manila, and the increasingly um, unpredictable weather and climate uh, conditions and the uh, more recently, the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. So the, the effects 
of these current uh, methodologies I mentioned is to cut costs in respect of the employer and to increase the effectiveness and subsequently the productivity of the employee. This means that the traditional employer-employee relationship no longer holds true and efficient to all types of uh, industries. And uh, again, I should say that SOT bills, the, especially those that uh, will yes. bring in more rigidities, shall bring us backward instead of addressing the conditions. Right, right. And, um, right. Yeah. Dapat yung HR must be listening to this. You recently, I read in your uh, page, it's actually affecting us and Lloyd, our, our executive producer. It's about the work of the gig economy, of the freelancers. You, you had a position on that. Tell us, because I know that there is a proposed uh, bill on that, but uh, ECOP has a position on that, on that, on that, on that bill. Yung mga gaya sa amin ngayon na we are actually on the gig economy and we are freelancers. Can you update that? Uh, update that? <laughs> in, in general, I think we oppose the, the bill. Because, Thank uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mawawalan kayo ng uh, flexibility to deal with, uh, you know, uh, with, the, with the needs and requirements of... Uh, with the needs and uh, requirements of your uh, of your your profession uh, or practice, you, so are Lloyd, by, you are by yourselves uh, employers in your in your right. own. Right. Ay ang ganda ng pananaw na yun na ah. that one liner. As I, I got an insight from that. So Lloyd Luna, are you listening? We have to support ECOP on that because I read that, that on the proposal. So the position is very clear from ECOP that we are also employers and we should have that flexibility. Thank you, Roland, for giving us that clear uh, uh, ano, uh, perspective. Last na lang on that. Another one. What can you say about the current? Now that uh, uh, considering the current Current situation of the labor management relationships. What is ECOP's uh, uh, slant on this or initiative on this? Uh, very dynamic naman ang labor management relations dito sa uh, Pilipinas and uh, there are various uh, mechanisms to ensure that labor and management uh, continues to engage with one another at the national level for example we have the national tripartite uh, industrial peace council where uh, uh, pending legislation and uh, proposed policy issuances of the department of labor and employment are uh, extensively uh, discussed by both uh, workers and employers uh, representatives but uh, ECOP is also trying to institutionalize uh, bipartisan at the at the workplace meron kasi tayong um, uh, institutionalized mechanism for dialogue sa tripartism pero sa bipartisan ay ay wala of course meron tayong collective bargaining at the enterprise uh, level pero hindi nag-uusap ng in an institutionalized manner ng yeah. labor at saka employers laban kaya merong programa ang uh, ECOP sa tulong ng Confederation of Danish uh, Industry to strengthen bipartisan at the enterprise and uh, national level para mapag-usapan ng employers at saka ng trade union movement ang mga mga lalo na yung mga controversial na issue baka mamaya it will make a difference kung uh, diretsyong mag-uusap yung employer at saka yung, right. yung employers through ECO, PCCI, Phil Export at saka yung trade union movement to the yes. federation of free workers trade union congress of the Philippines at Sentro, meron kaming binuong tinatawag na leaders sa uh, forum at regular na nag-uusap ito. Kung maalala mo nung umpisa pa lamang nung ECQ at pinatupad yung CAM, ay nagkaroon ng joint statement ang uh, labor at saka ang 
ang employers kung paano mas uh, mapapaayos yung pagpapatupad ang mapapatupad ang company it's uh, um, a very good development because um, uh, nakakapag-usap uh, in an institutionalized manner yung employers at saka uh, workers at the end of the day we share uh, employers and workers uh, share uh, a common um, a common uh, interest. So, so Roland, just yes. a question. Do yeah. you have a hotline if people will have some problems with their uh, unions? Do you have a hotline wherein they can ask uh, help and then uh, seek advice? Actually, merong help desk ang ECOP at yan ay naka-embed sa aming uh, website. Ang website ng ECOP is www.ecop.org uh, ph and uh, almost 90 90 to 95 percent of the questions the queries the com comments that we get in our help desk come from workers and uh, employees although the help desk was set up <laughs> essentially <laughs> to, to assist the uh, member companies of echo uh, we were surprised that uh, more questions uh, more uh, comments are actually coming from uh, from employees asking questions about a ret ret retrenchment, holiday pays, uh, minimum wage, uh, um, and uh, interpretation of uh, uh, so that, provisions. That, on, labor that only means that may lapses ang HR, because HR should be the one to inform the employees yes. about all of this. Yes. Yeah. So they, so they have to, uh, alam mo naman, Jesse, that the HR practitioners are uh, very active in the activities of uh, of ECOP and uh, the participants in may, in most of our trading programs are actually IR, our industrial relations and uh, human resource. Uh, okay. Before before the before the second break, I will ask you this as quickly as I know. I know that you have a Kapatidan Awards yeah. and you do this every other year. So, for, so that the HR yeah. will know, so that the HR will know how they can fare and then be a, a winner of that Kapatidan Awards. What are the focus or what are the key criteria of the Kapatidan Award from ECOP? So, but ano ang dapat nila gawin so that they can be a deserving uh, winner or they can join the Kapatiran Award. Ano po ang criteria noon? Well, uh, the Kapatiran sa Industria Award, or for short, Kapatid Award, was actually established in uh, 1995. And uh, the award is spent to uh, recognize the partnership between labor and management at the enterprise uh, level. Ibig sabihin, binibigyan ng pagkilala yung good or best practices na ginagawa ng management at saka ng labor at the enterprise level that results to industrial peace, higher productivity, preservation of uh, preservation and uh, and uh, creation of jobs as well as uh, corporate social responsibility. So the, so the focus is more so the fo the focus is more on the peaceful coexistence of labor and management in the organization. Initially, that was the the emphasis, but over the years, that evolved na yung uh, award. So hindi lamang that is why apat yung criteria ng kapatiran uh, kapatiran award ng ECO or kapatid award ng ECO. And what are these? Industrial peace and harmony. Okay, so one. So uh, so an HR must make sure that there is industrial peace. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh, but oh. Uh, we know that industrial peace does not mean the absence of uh, conflict. I think oh, it's I like how, we manage, how, uh, we manage, how we manage how we manage that conflict of this uh, you know uh, problems uh, between uh, the manager or uh, the run Okay, oh, HR makinig ka. So pangalawa, ano po yung pangalawa yung quality and productivity. Oh, so mm -hmm. sure. So yeah. HR must make sure na productive yung ano. Yung, mm -hmm. yung organization, yung kompanya. But it's the third one. So that's the, the, that's the third one is responsible and ethical uh, business uh, conduct. This wow. is a term for corporate social uh, responsibility. Uh, responsibility. Kasi 
dapat hindi lamang profitability ang pinagtutuunan ng pansin ng employer. Napakahalaga din yung yung ginagawa niya para sa sa community where it operates at napakahalaga din dyan yung compliance to uh, labor laws and uh, uh, regulations. Okay. Yung, hey, Charlie, uh, listen, ha, kasi ito ang criteria ng ECOP na gagawin natin na pangatlo. What is the last? The, the last Uh, but certainly not the least is job creation and uh, yeah oh. <laughs> na nakakatulong ka sa community i yeah. like that so you you know with this criteria of awards that will be the the kpis the key performance indicators of hr we must be able to to achieve that so that we can see that we are nakaka benchmark tayo and what actually uh, the employer needs don't leave po kasi we'll have the second break Then we'll ask you some questions as regards your conference. So yes. can we have the second announcement? Uh, I'm so glad, Carmine and Wan Lu, you're watching. You should have heard our discussion with our guest, uh, Director General uh, Roland uh, Moya, about, he just informed us, the one-liner, that we are assured ECOP is protecting us with that proposed bill as regards GIC. Tayo yun, the live streamers. Diba? So, siguro... Yeah, and then Pearly, thank you for watching. And then Obet, Obet, say, Obet says, Obet, the past president, Obet Policarpio, uh, would like to greet uh, uh, Director General Roland. Okay, so let us continue. Can we have, uh, ang bilis ang oras, can we have, uh, Primo, tell us, I know that uh, there is up and coming national conference of Uh, ECOP. When will this be? At ano ang, what do we expect from that? And siguro from here, for those who can are interested, you can still join and tell us how we can they can join. Yeah, actually the 41st National Conference of Employers of the Employers Confederation of the Philippines started in the first week of uh, July. What the the NCE or the National Conference of Employer is the biggest annual activity of ECOP and it brings together employers, uh, HRIR practitioners, and government uh, uh, policy makers. But uh, this time around, uh, this is the first, uh, this is actually the first time that we will be uh, holding it uh, uh, online. So it's online. the first vit virtual conferencing of of um, of ECOP. So nag-umpisa yung National Conference of Employers. Ang kaibahan kasi ng conference natin ngayon, Jesse, is that we have a pre-conference, wow. we have conference sessions. We also have the main conference itself and also post-conference uh, sessions. Where the are we now? We are, well, starting this Monday, 
for the whole of August, so every week, uh, we will be holding the main the, the main sessions of the national uh, conference. We're done with the four sessions of the pre uh, conference. So for the whole month of August, we will be holding uh, the main conference. And the first session of the main conference will be uh, held uh, on Monday with no less than the Vice President of the wow. Republic of the Philippines, uh, Maria Leonor Robredo, as the keynote uh, uh, speaker. And uh, we hope uh, all of you will join us in the opening ceremonies of uh, the National Conference of uh, how how can if somebody's interested how can they join how can they register well actually the the link is in our uh, website again you mm -hmm. can go to our website www.ecop.org.ph and look for the the link to our national uh, conference you can also check it out in our uh, facebook account uh, which is the employers Confederation of the uh, Philippines and our postings uh, during the past uh, few weeks are mostly on the activities uh, related to our uh, national what is the What is the theme of this year's conference? Uh, the theme of this year's uh, conference, uh, Jesse, is the 21st century employer digital, agile, and are resilient. What a description wow. for the first for the twenty first century um, employer. I so see. I think um, the main objectives, the, the main reason why we <laughs> selected this theme is because we need this kind of employers who are digital, agile, and resilient and to restart to restart the economy. You nailed it. You nailed yeah, it. Which has been badly. Uh, affected by the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And these are the three main characteristics that will define the success or failure of, of an employer. Also, we have to prepare uh, businesses and employers for the future. How can yeah. you prepare for the future if you are not digital, if you are not agile and you are not uh, resilient to the challenges, right. problems that uh, come our way. And the, we also need employers who are future-proof and change-ready. Okay. And uh, I think the, the theme also presupposes that uh, employers should be change drivers. I see. Yeah, right, right. Change drivers is the key. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do not leave because we, yeah, I still have to talk to you after the show. I will just have to conclude it. But before I give my conclusion, can you give us a message, your parting message to our viewers and listeners? Well, uh, my only message uh, right now is that uh, we should all take care of uh, ourselves and uh, the members of our family and our friends. Um, these are very difficult times and, uh, and, and the problems and the challenges that we face will uh, continue not only for the rest of the year but also for the coming, in the coming year. And uh, we should brace ourselves for more difficulties and uh, problems. But as I say this, we should also make sure that we are ready to deal with these challenges and uh, and uh, problems so uh, let's keep safe yeah thank you and, uh, thank for you. for businesses uh, let us observe the minimum uh, health protocols and standards prescribed by the department of labor and employment as well as the department of health i know there are some uh, difficulties, especially among the micro and small, micro, small and medium um, enterprises. But I think it is important that we adhere to these health uh, protocols because it's the only way by which we can uh, continue doing our uh, businesses because we have to take care of our uh, 
employees and we have to open our economy so that uh, you know we have to ensure that uh, our workers uh, you know have a means of uh, livelihood yes. and yes. should continue earning uh, uh, income and we can only do that if the if businesses continue to operate and uh, and function yes that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Director General Roland Moya, for those uh, insightful words, advice to us. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, so what are the expectations of employers to HR? A lot. And one of them, of course, is that we have to take care of our business continuity. As I mentioned, we have to be a partner, an implementer, a consultant, a facilitator, and of course, we take the lead. But most of all, as what we gathered from uh, Director General Roland Moya, is that we, are, we should not, we should not um, always remember, omit from our, what when we are doing it, the mission and the vision of, of the organization. What we want, what is the transition that we want to bring our organization into that better normal? And he mentioned that is what is very important, the culture. And I know it is happening. I, I, I now recall it. We call it reflective action, reflective activity. While we are doing it now, because it's ongoing, HR must already reflect. What is the culture? That's why I like I like the conversation earlier with uh, Director General Roland Moy. I just got it that what is the effect of what we're doing now? We are working remotely. We are so scared. We are following protocols. But what is the paradigm, the mindset that we are now developing? We are the norms that we are developing. What an insight! Yes, we are looking at financial. He mentioned that. We are looking at operations. He mentioned that. And of course, we are mentioning of that to do's of HR. That one of the major, sometimes we, we don't look at, we shy of it. It's the least thing that we do is that we have to look into the culture. That is what I gather. That it's what that resonates with me. Natamaan ako ng sinabi ni Roland. We have to look into that culture because it's happening. What is worse is we are already trying to institutionalize a culture that later on it will be mahirap na, beyond that we can repair. So that is the takeaway of this wonderful lunch session. We have to be happy, including me and Wanlu and Carmine, because we are actually in the gig economy, we are freelancers. The ECOP is actually representing us. And for all the HR, you heard it, you heard it. We are being taken care of and we are given directions. So that means that there should be what we call for us, management and labor, good relationship, but for HR, we must be supporting also our managers. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is Jesse Francis Rebostilio, just marvelous.